but I am something I have and something I know. I know my, myself, don't I? Hello and welcome to Ask the Two-Factor Authentication Guy. I bet you can't guess what our question's about. I'm Tom Merritt. And Bill in Springfield writes, what the heck is two-fatter identification? <laughs> that could be something else. But I'm pretty sure it's a typo and he means two-factor identification and actually means two-factor authentication, uh, which is what we are always requiring, if possible, and recommending companies implement to keep you secure. Two-factor authentication uh, is generally defined as something you have and something you know. The something you know is your password, right? But that alone can be stolen, as we've seen all over the news, right? So not only should you choose a strong password, but also have a second factor, which is something you have. Now, a lot of second factor authentication is implemented over text message so that you get the code on your phone and then that's the thing you have. You have the code, it's on your phone. Problem with that is it really wasn't something you had. It was something somebody sent to you and it can be intercepted. There are ways to intercept text messages and then it becomes a less secure version of two-factor authentication. So something you have is better as an actual key uh, you can get key fobs that are USB-C or USB. You plug into the device and it's like, oh, there's your second factor. I can log you in. Or it can be an authenticator app. There's an authenticator app from Authy. There's one from Google Authenticator. LastPass has one. And they locally create a code that is mathematically identifiable to the code created by the site you're trying to log in. So it's something you can prove you have, and there's no information being transmitted between that can be intercepted. So there you go. Hope that helps you understand two-factor authentication, Bill.